something. Uh, we'll start out with looking at organic Oregon from a vineyard perspective. Then we'll look at the experience economy and wine tourism, the four E's by Pine and Gilmore. And then characteristics of experiencing terroir tourism. So what is organic Oregon? To me, it's the culture. When I look at the social constructs of making terroir, I look at the people of Oregon and how the wines are made. But I also believe that there is, of course, the soils, climates, and the nature of the winemaking in the terroir of wine as well. If we were to look specifically at the vineyards in Oregon, we see that there's estimated to be nearly 50%, uh, approximately 50%, 48% um, of Oregon's vineyards that are sustainable or organic. Just to give context to that, if you were to look at our neighbor to the south in California, the amount of acreage that they have planted in sustainable or organic practices is 1%. Oh, it's two. Two! <laughs> In Oregon, um, uh, we, we look at uh, a couple different certif uh, certifications specifically to develop sustainable and then finally organic. Um, uh, the live certification, which came online in 1997, uh, and then uh, organic through the Oregon TILF and the USDA. When we look at the Oregon uh, Tilth, they are overseeing the wine that's being made. If you want to make wa a wine and want to claim that is in, grapes are organic, it must be overseen by the Oregon Tilth, which is certified over a thousand acres as meeting the USDA standard for organic production in Oregon. Specifically taken from the 2014 census by the Oregon Tilth, you can see the acreage as well as its um, uh, corresponding vineyard. Uh, tomorrow, the uh, lunch uh, will be uh, co-sponsored with Abacella uh, with King Estate Winery here with the most acreage under plant, 465. Now, not verified, but in the most recent uh, examination of these or organic acreage, they are above 500 now for a total of 1,110. But still, as a portion of the overall organic vineyards that are planted, nearly 50% here in Oregon. So organic Oregon vineyards must follow the TTB's rules in the United States of America in order to have wine which is created in an organic fashion. All grapes and other agriculture ingredients, including yeast, if commercially available, must be certified organic. Non-agricultural ingredients must be specifically allowed on the national list and not exceed a combined 5% of the product. Sulfur dioxide or sulfites may not be added. Labels must state the name of the certifying agent, i.e. certified organic by, and then the organization, or in this case, the USDA. So question, how does this make Oregon a potential destination for terroir tourists to seek out place in the form of organic vineyards which incorporate many characteristics of terroir? One of the reasons that I'm investigating this. <laughs> now I'm moving to the experience economy. This particular book, read, um, read to many children in the United States of America and potentially internationally, Dr. Seuss wrote The Cat in the Hat, in which the main character is now allegedly based off of the classic American con artist. When we think about the idea of experiences, The Cat in the Hat was one of the number one promoters of experience. In this case, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. A motivation to find otherness or experience or escape. One of the key components to the four E's as it's been laid on wine tourism and one that I hope to be able to describe to you today. 
First, we have to look at wine tourism it's, as, it's, um, uh, as it's noted uh, in the scholarly literature. A widely cited definition of wine tourism is visitations to vineyards, wineries, wine festivals, and wine shows for which grape wine tasting and or experiencing the attributes of a grape wine region are the prime motivation factors for visitors. The search for wine destination experiences which marry the world's interest in wine and travel is a contemporary tourism trend. Now, to look more specifically at the experience economy by Pine and Gilmore, uh, first written um, uh, out of uh, Harvard uh, College of Business, uh, 1989. Uh, we are looking here at the price of coffee offerings. Uh, in my home state, there's this little company called Starbucks. <laughs> They've taken a commodity like coffee beans. They've roasted and ground the coffee to turn into goods. Then they created the need for the services through coffee vendors, and eventually Starbucks now provides an experience. And they've taken the pricing of their product, the commodity, up to a premium level. One of the things that Starbucks does now in their contemporary design of all new Starbucks in which are fl flying the corporate flag is that they actually look at 14 different design studios that they host all over the world to be as specific and as authentic as they can be to the culture and the architecture of each of the regions in which the Starbucks is being built. If we lay this on top of wine, an example of the commodity, the grapes, an example of the goods, the wine, an example of the service, sommelier, and the example of experience, the vineyard tour. Another um, uh, example of how we see the 4E economy. Specifically, well, I haven't introduced the 4E economy, so let me talk about the 4E's for a second. The 4E's, or the experience economy, that make up the experience economy are entertainment, education, aesthetics with an E, uh, and escapist. In these cases, when they all come together for your wine visitor or tourist, we talk about this being the sweet spot. Engaging in entertainment, education, aesthetic, and escapist behavior or providing that for your customer, then indeed is your home run. In this case, there are a couple of examples outside. Tasting wine, entertainment, learning about wine, education, visiting a winery, aesthetic values, and then participating in the winemaking, the escapist behavior, a cure for the mundane. This is um, uh, written out of um, uh, Quadri Felitti, 2012, um, as a, a study that was uh, produced out of Lake Erie. And indeed, what this per, uh, particular um, figure, uh, uh, rather, is, uh, is sharing is it's looking at the four E's on the top half, it's going left, excuse me, to right, educational, aesthetic, entertainment, and es escapist experiences, and then matching them up with the four P's of marketing, product, place, pr uh, price, place, and promotion. And then each of these are an element that should add sensory pleasure, meaning, stories, or insights, and personal relevance for the consumer. Examples highlighting where indeed education may pair up with product. A B&B or winery has a heritage rose garden labeled with the different varietals, names, and histories. This is a shot of Oregon in a vineyard, specifically in the Southern Oregon AVA, and a wine that you may have tasted this uh, this afternoon, Del Rio Vineyards, also to be seen from the I-5 traveling north or south 
in the uh, Medford region. Why do I show the picture? Indeed, this is a place and not necessarily exclusively a product. So what is terroir tourism? Terroir tourism is characterized from emerging scientific research in geology, climatology, ecology, gastronomy, geography, and tourism. Terroir tourism has been recently recognized to have the potential for developing a new agricultural tourism product. Holland et al. 2014 developed a framework that you see here to the right with regional, develop oh, regional development wine tourism product and viticulture, and winemaking components to form a regional identity. In this case, uh, the testing was done in Canada. Holland made a significant initial step to develop a framework of terroir tourism. It is not clear if terroir tourism is conceptually different from wine tourism, and if so, how the two types of tourisms are different. One of the reasons for the study. So what? To continue to develop the working construct on terroir tourism through the, identifying the characteristics of terroir tourism experiences. Little research has investigated terroir tourism and its tourism characteristics. Specifically, in Vordour's typology of terroir, we're able to see the term terroir, which is a French term derived from terri, land, has been used to denote special characteristics of a particular place. Interacting with plant genetics and in an agricultural products such as wine, coffee, cho chocolate, tea, and cheese. Jacobson defines terroir as sense of place, which indicates unique characteristics of the local environment to produce certain qualities of the product. Emerging terroir out of the literature from TAC, looking here that there are three different levels of terroir as described providing a contemporary review of terroir, the literal level, meaning earth or soil, from the Webster's Dictionary, the environmental level, including climate, sunlight, topography, geology, and soil, soil water relations, Robinson 99, and finally the holistic level, which includes all of the above, plus viticulture and winemaking practices, as well as the desires of the consumer and local community. In this particular study, using May Ring's inductive category development, we went through and did content analysis, looking at trying to de de develop the categories. There was a revision of the categories, a formative check, and then a work through of the text. But in going through this, what you'll see in the results is that the categories that were developed were indeed based off of and uh, laid on top of Verdure's seminal work on terroir as a framework and typology. Territory, plant growing, brand, advertising, I identity. What you'll see highlighted in yellow are the, is a result of the coding that took place on the content analysis of the literature and ones in which we had the highest codes for in territory were land, region, and place, plant under plant growing characteristics, climate, science, under brand, environment, product, and rural, and under identity, winemaking, culture, and local. This specifically goes into the amount of, uh, of times they were seen in the literature and the codes as they were recorded. In this particular uh, results, we can see the territory came across with the most codes, followed by advertising, plant growing, and then finally the identity category. Another picture of the Del Rio vineyard. Conclusion. Importantly, we need to be able to understand the study and how it reveals the highest frequency characteristics relating to experience in terroir to terroir tourism. The finding indicates that such territory characteristics as region, land, and place are important keywords to experiencing terroir tourism. Implications, the findings will help a terroir tourist destination to develop alternative marketing strategies based on the terroir tourism characteristics of region, place, and land, differentiating it from the traditional wine tourist destination. 
While the term and concept of terroir has been used in most European you know, tourist experiences, the term has not been yet introduced in the American wine tourist in most regions. The author of this study believes that terroir tourism is not just wine exclusive product, but specific to place, that's specific to place, but to many place bound agriculture products. Future research and where it may, uh, where it may go. Uh, a qualitative mixed method study of wine professionals and academics to identify the importance of terroir characteristics for developing the construct of terroir tourism. Example questions of a proposed questionnaire and response is below. What is terroir to you? When was the first time you've experienced terroir? Where have you experienced terroir? And then a short example here from my colleague Roberto Izzo. It's part of the wine DNA of the uh, wine identity. My first experience with terroir was in Switzerland, where almost every region grows grapes and makes wine. There is a distinct wine culture in Switzerland between the French, German, and Italian regions that translate in wines that are unique in those regions and have a distinctive terroir. In the new world, the concept of terroir is growing, but I feel that we are still in the stage of trying, planting with new varietals, discovering new viticulture areas. There aren't thousands of years of wine culture at this point. This was left in, in, in um, uh, this particular format just to take a look at indeed what the study was pulling out. In this case, we're looking at the words that were in a certain promotional material. Find your place, discover the taste of a distinctive wine culture, official touring guide 2016-2017, perfect local pairings, insider itineraries, practical travel tips. Where might I have found this particular literature? And what characteristic do we see here that talks to terroir? Place. And indeed, when you look at the latest 2016-27 touring guide of the Oregon Wine Board, you see those same exact words in, of course, a much prettier format. Find your place. Very commendable to Oregon and the Oregon Wine Board for putting this together as Oregon sees itself as a terroir-driven destination. So find your terroir, enjoy, and if you have any questions for me, please ask after the session. I'll be moderating and open to questions. I appreciate your time. And thank you very much.